we've also been working with ALK inhibitors now for a few years, and crizotinib was a really exciting development showing the feasibility of testing and now having a drug approved for a 4% population. And this was a treatment that has a response rate in the 60% range and a, a median duration of response approaching a year and many patients beyond a year. But crizotinib was actually an incidentally discovered ALK inhibitor. It wasn't developed as much that way. And there are other ALK inhibitors out there. And we know that essentially invariably patients will develop resistance to crizotinib. LDK-378 is a Wyeth drug that was presented by Alice Shaw. It looked quite promising. Mary, tell us a bit about that. What do you think of the whole field of second generation ALK inhibitors and you know are we going to potentially have other agents to work with in this setting? Yeah, I mean, I think you really hit it when you said you get these patients who have these phenomenal responses, they're on a drug that's oral, pretty well tolerated, and then they develop resistance and it's so devastating for the patients, disappointing for the doctor, and many times when their disease comes back, it can be difficult to treat, even with chemotherapy or other agents. So I think we were all very excited about these compounds, but also cautious, because we've seen with EGFR that it hasn't been so easy to treat acquired resistance, and a lot of trials have been done and have been disappointing. So I think the results that Dr. Shaw presented were exciting. This trial included both patients who had never been exposed to crizotinib, as well as a large percentage, over 60% of patients who had had crizotinib and then become resistant to crizotinib. And the results were exciting. So about 60% of res patients responded, and then even more patients had stable disease. So the number of patients who benefited was very large. And the great thing was you benefited just as much if you'd had prior crizotinib as if you were new to the drug. I always tell my patients that treating cancer is a marathon, not a race. And so I think the sequencing of agents and being able to, well, we can start with crizotinib, get our maximum benefit out of that, then we can move on to a new drug is really exciting. I don't have personal experience with the LDK compound, but the toxicity that was presented looked great, even better than for crizotinib in terms of visual toxicity. Which has not been a terrible Right, not a terrible problem. toxicity, but it, the toxicity looked very good. I do have some experience we're doing. There's another compound that's made by Chugai that we're working with. There was a poster presentation um, about that compound, and it's also looking very good. And, and I've personally treated patients who were resistant to crizotinib and, and seen responded results with, that. with that compound. Right. I mean, that had a 93% okay. <laughs> response rate, and, and uh, also, well, that yeah. was in crizotinib naive patients, as yeah. I recall. Yeah, right, the so. patients I've put on, there's a, the study that we're doing is a phase one study, and patients that I've put on have all been crizotinib resistant, and, and, and all results. have responded so far. Oh, that's the ones Because that I, I have, I'm going to be putting patients yeah. on that same trial, and I look forward to that. Yeah. Because Unfortunately, a lot of people, even as they're responding to some of these therapies, are thinking about the clock ticking and right. what to do next. Right. It's nice to have right. some options to really think about because there was the Chu guy, their right. representation, LDK378, right. uh, Ariad's drug AP26113 right. that also appears to have a very impressive activity in crizotinib naive and uh, crizotinib resistant patients. Another thing that Alice Shaw reported about LDK and Ross Kamage also noted in some patients on the Ariad drug were brain responses. Yeah. Because we have seen that many of the patients who progress on crizotinib progress in the, in the central nervous system Absolutely. because the drug doesn't get in. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important and relevant to have a drug that you can get responses of brain metastases. Right, and maybe, you know, if we start using these drugs earlier too, maybe we can prevent or delay brain metastases by using drugs that cross the blood-brain barrier and, you know, potentially maybe we can delay resistance by using some of these drugs that seem to be more powerful ALK inhibitors. Yeah, Nate, what did you think about you know, these multiple drugs now, second generation, in terms of their... How impressive are they? And then, as Mary mentioned, you know, how do they fit in? Do you see it as a 
first line replacement for or a follow on to get your initial nine, 12 or more months of benefit with crizotinib and then position these agents later thinking that mm -hmm. you might be able to get benefit from crizotinib early or never, right. but these other ones you might be able to get the benefit and add nine or 12 or more yeah. months from the crizotinib. Uh, you know, we talked about this and it's exciting to think about being able to do something like that. It's kind of the kidney cancer strategy. You use one drug and then you switch to another what seems like a similar drug and you still seem to get it's a more good benefit. good problem when to you have now. When you it, is. <laughs> it is. There's no doubt that these are incredibly exciting. I mean, they work really well in, in a majority of patients. And I've had a few people on, the, both the Chugai and the LDK. The one cautionary tale I think about the sequencing is exactly the, the CNS problem, the, the brain metastasis problem. Right. Because uh, what the Colorado group showed is that 50% of patients on crizotinib who progress, start progressing in the brain before anywhere else. And if we could prevent that, I mean, two of my patients on these second generation ALK inhibitors have had brain metastases and both have responded in the brain and are continuing to respond a long time after. And if we could prevent that up front, we could spare people whole brain radiation, lots of different potential toxicities. So. I don't know what the right answer is going to be with this. I worry it's a little simplistic to think we can just use crizotinib and it'll last for nine months and then we can just add something else and then it'll last for nine months. That would be great if we could do that, but I think we're going to need some more trials to really decide that.